Certifications, something which is relevant in most professions and industries, but most certainly in the arborist industry. Certifications are a way of showing not only yourself, but also potential customers that you have the knowledge and expertise to be able to do a job to a certain standard. You may be considering if you'd start working and learn on the job, or become a certified European tree worker, for example. While this path will be different for everyone and will vary, there are some paths which are recommendable. I think it mostly depends on what your aim is. So if you want to be a consultant, then you have specific paths to work on. If you want to be a climbing arborist, then you have other paths. It's also depending on what type of consult, uh, clients you're going to have. So if you're going to work more like with municipalities, then there's specific certifications that they usually require from you or qualifications for that sake. Uh, whereas if you're more private customers or more climbing, like fresh uh, practical parts, then you have other certifications. So it really depends on your goal. Uh, if you want to be broad, of course, then you're going to have a lot of different types of certification. If you have a more narrow field, okay, then there's specific uh, certification to work with. One of the most popular certifications is the ETW certification, especially if you're planning to become a climbing arborist. During an ETW certification, you will learn about the elements of tree maintenance, safe working practices, arboricultural matters with practical experience, and legal and social regulations, which are all essential in a successful arborist career. I would, if I was a climbing arborist, I would definitely go for a European tree worker, the ETW certification. That is by far the most widely used and also uh, widely uh, sort of part of procurements. So it's widely part of those uh, requirements. Uh, ETW certifications, I think, also create a mobility. It's also partly known in the US if you want to work there. There are incredible amounts of material to help you learn. Everything from full-fledged textbooks to YouTube videos and articles online. The industry is also already full of professionals with extensive knowledge who are often happy to share their expertise. So don't be worried or discouraged that it will be hard to find learning resources for your certification journey. Uh, so I would definitely start working as a cl uh, climbing arborist, good, find a good company, a company that will teach you things. Buy the ETW book and also like follow YouTube channels. Make sure that you keep on uh, like reading things because the ETW certification is constantly changing as well. So the actual certification will be what is the best practice right now. So read up on national certification, national laws and so on. Make sure that you're well prepared once you go there. There are certain instances, for example, if you're not planning on being a climbing arborist, but rather a consulting arborist, the ETW may be less relevant and a different certification will be more beneficial to begin with for you. This all depends on your scenario and what your career plan is. Completely, because the ETW certification is just for climbing arborists. Uh, so if you want to be a consultant, then that path is actually blocked completely. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I would do is to do uh, the ISA certification instead. The ISA certification is not that widely used within Europe, but in a Swedish context, it works really well. Uh, and if you want to be a consultant, most of the time you will also uh, go into uh, to risk assessments. And if you want to do risk assessment, at least in Sweden, you will have to do the track course. Mm -hmm. So the track is then a qualification instead of uh, a certification. It's basically the same, but there are some smaller differences. One common question in many scenarios is the difference between real-world experience and certifications. Just because you have a business degree, for example, does not mean that you'll be a great business person. And the same applies to arborism, of course. I, I think it is really a combination because the certification doesn't really have to do with your uh, your path when it comes to climbing arborist or working arborist. It's actually just a way to prove that you have that knowledge. So a certification doesn't give you even more knowledge or even more skills. It's just a proof that you have those skills. Mm -hmm. So we have been pushing, we in the Swedish Tree Association yeah. have been pushing for certification a lot. And that's basically because we want to make sure that everyone that is working within the industry are really professionals. Uh, because arborism, uh, and I think that that goes for a lot of countries, isn't something that is uh, protected by laws. Uh, mm -hmm. Some regions do have that, but the majority of areas it's not protected. Thereby we need to find another way to actually make sure that the people are that doing the, their job is actually the best in their field. In many countries there are authorities working on protecting the sanctity of the arborist profession. Certifications are there in order to make sure that safety procedures and quality of work are as high as they can be, 
which will create a more long-term viability for the industry, protect customers, and most importantly, make sure that arborists are safe and have a long career in front of them. Yeah, so we've been approached by a lot of uh, arborists, both consultant and practical uh, climbing arborists. And what they've been complaining about is that a lot of unskilled people are actually taking their job. Uh, they are lowering the bar when it comes to safety and prices. And a lot of times also they're not doing uh, what we would say like within the industry practice. So doing the topping and so on on trees that should be actually be protected. So because we saw this uh, problem, what we said was what we need to do is to educate the um, the municipalities, the actual buyers of tree care, because they are the ones that actually uh, need to have the requirements. They need to put this into uh, procurements or uh, other types of um, uh, contracts and so on. So our main thing has been doing to promote them and talking about it, talking about the certifications, the goal of certification, the risk of not using certified uh, people. Uh, actually combining that with the work with the, the um, uh, Swedish EPA. So the Swedish EPA have been publishing different types of requirements, recommendations, so on that's been sent out both to local government councils and the municipalities. Thereby we're creating a need. Uh, we're creating a need for certifications and thereby also starting to exclude the unprofessional people that sadly is within the industry. Like with anything, knowledge is not a one-time thing. Learning is a long-term process which is not complete after one course and there are many ways to continue learning over time. Firstly, one may try new things on the job in order to learn new things, but also there are a handful of other certifications which one can do in order to further their knowledge and experience within the arborist industry. So a DTW is really the start. Uh, the, uh, after that, uh, I think that say within 5-10 years we will start having more ETT, so European Tree Technicians. We also have the vet cert, uh, so certified uh, tree care professionals working with veteran trees. Uh, we also have different types of e e ISA certification or qualification like track and so on. So it's really a lot of things there. So I would say go slowly, start with one thing. Then you can see, okay, what type of procurements are out there? What requirements are out there? What do I need to do to fulfill those requirements? And of course, we will have those the early adopters as well. The first one to take the certification there is sort of taking a torch and then moving onwards. But when it comes to uh, continuous education in different types of the settings, I think that one of the really good things about certifications is that most of them also requires you to do continuous education. You need to have 20 points or 30 points or something like that per three year term. So that means you need to always be on your game and making sure that you keep up with industry practices and so on. And I think that that is actually fantastic. I usually say that the, the most dangerous people we have both for themselves and for the trees and the industry is the people who think that they know everything once they finish an education. It's like, okay, I've been, I've been at that uh, education center or school for two years. I know everything now. And then 30 years later, they're doing the same things. That is really a huge risk. Mm -hmm. And we can see that within the industry. Uh, and I actually wrote an article a couple of years ago, sort of provocative, saying that when it comes to landscape architects, landscape engineers and so on, there is no requirements whatsoever for them to do continuous education. We're putting all of that into arborists. I think that is great, of course, that arborists do that, but also everyone that is working with procurements, everyone that is a manager also needs to do this. You also need to uh, go to courses, go to conferences, read up on things because everything is constant. It should also be mentioned that there are quite a few other certifications in addition to arborist certifications. For example, many arborists are running their own business and it could therefore be very relevant to get certified or educated in other things related to running a business, such as accounting or HR. In this regard, the things you can learn are quite literally endless from anything from business certifications to a driver's license may help your career. I, I think that that's also something you need to think about. It's that something you need to have in-house when it comes to accountants and so on. Where for me, when I'm running my own business, I do a lot of things by myself, but of course I have professionals looking into everything and making sure that everything is by the book, <laughs> literally by the book. Uh, so that is something you need to do, but you need to also have a grasp on things. Uh, I think for a lot of, especially arborists, uh, it's a good idea to, to partner up with someone that can help you with all of these practical stuff so you can focus on what you're really good at. When it comes to CPR and so on, that is something that is part of a certification, at least the ETW. So you sort of are forced to do that anyway, but that is, of course, a really important thing because we want people to be safe.
we have sadly enough quite a lot of accidents within our industry that is something that needs to change people needs to to work more safer and one of the things that you can do there is to actually attend those courses and those types of um a lot of talk of certifications but if you were to plan your education from this point in 30 seconds it may look something like this so three different types of certification um i think for me definitely the isa uh, the track and it will be also the vet set. Those are the ones that have really been helpful for me. When it comes to others, like climbing arbors, I think definitely the ETW, the track, and continuously it will be the EF. Thank you for tuning in to the National Arborist channel. We hope that you found this insightful, and we'll see you in the next episode.